It's Sunday school, and let's hope my uh, screen doesn't go wide this morning. Did it okay yesterday? Anyway, look what I'm looking at. It, this is an old edition of 777, uh, or what's now sold as 777. The Cabal of Aleister Crowley I got to way back in the 70s. Anyway, look at these lists. Tables and tables and tables of of angels. A hierarchy. Table after table after table of different angels. All organized uh, according to the 32 uh, paths of wisdom. Or in other words, the look at that. Look at all of those. Uh, the uh, ten sephira, sephiroth, and uh, the twenty-two paths, uh, as set out and organized and fractalized uh, according to the traditions of the Kabbalah, most specifically the Sephiroth Zira, and that's all fine and good. And as your your uh, uh, studying magic for the first time, the sort of the Kabbalistic hermetic form of uh, ceremonial magic as uh, many of us uh, uh, study. Uh, you're confronted with literally hundreds and hundreds, perhaps even thousands of traditional angels angels that have bosses that are bigger angels, uh, that have bosses that are archangels, that have bosses that uh, all fall under the category of a particular uh, facet of uh, the supreme consciousness it, itself. And those are called God names. Okay, the, the, the different God names aren't uh, uh, so much associated with what people would commonly think as, as, as different gods, but just aspects of a singularity of, of uh, consciousness. Uh, uh, and uh, a certain archangel works for a certain aspect of deity and that uh, uh, there's teams of angels that, that work under the uh, authority of certain archangels and each of them have, have uh, uh, People were, were a pecking order. It's all very sort of feudal and medieval way of thinking of things, but it's also a very organized way of thinking of, of things. And uh, I often get uh, uh, letters or emails, and, and uh, uh, often you see the discussion of. Uh, uh, people talking about specific angels. Well, uh, Raphael showed up to me and he told me, you know, that uh, to do this or that. Or, or uh, should I evoke spirit so and so? You know, you did it and it was okay. It worked out okay for you. And, uh, and it's really hard for me to, uh, 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 explain at least what my basic pedestrian grasp of all of this uh, uh, is that your angels aren't necessarily my angels. It's not like they're living an objective reality of themselves, like like the like there's some. Uh, heavenly call center where there's actual Tetharthuruses and, and uh, uh, actually sitting around at the phone bank uh, responding to your your calls in the same way that they would respond uh, to mine. No. We are part of that hierarchy ourselves. We're one of those characters ourselves. 
and we fit into a hierarchy, make no mistake about it. But it's our own hierarchy. It's our own divine name. It's our own archangel. It's our own angels and spirits and intelligences. They're all ours. And they may be organized along the same lines uh, as the Kabbalistic angels, but nonetheless, they're ours. You can't blame your spirits on how my spirits behave. Does that make sense? Uh, in the Son of Chicken Kabbalah, okay, which is uh, Chicken Kabbalah uh, Part 2, if you don't have it, uh, at the very end, and I'm not giving anything away, believe me, I have what it's called the valediction. It's sort of my parting words. And I talk about this. And I'm going to share that with you this morning for Sunday School. As I've repeatedly reminded you, Kabbalah is a system of organizing your mind so that it may more perfectly reflect the universal consciousness of existence itself. Notice I'm not saying of God, or I'm not trying to drag in any kind of uh, 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 parochial uh, characterization of what this supreme consciousness is. It's the singularity. We're all stuck with the big whatever it is that we're wallowing around in like individual pieces of pineapple in a floating in the big singularity jello. But I digress. Kabbalah is a system of organizing your mind so that it may more perfectly reflect the universal consciousness of existence itself. And Kabbalistic exercises and meditations are designed to show us how everything in our world is connected to everything else. How everything is a reflection of everything else. How every idea and thought are connected to every other idea and thought. Modern mathematics offers us a perfectly beautiful and elegant model of what Kabbalists have been working with for centuries. Fractals. Fractals are a mathematical phenomenon that occurs on all levels of nature, expressed graphically Fractals generate similar replicating patterns at increasingly larger and or increasingly smaller scales. Each level almost identical to the level above it and to the level below it. Evolving or expanding symmetry. You've probably seen art. Uh, artistically stunning computer-generated examples of fractals. The natural laws that are illustrated by fractals are also on display at all times in terms of consciousness. The supreme consciousness of Godhead is the master pattern and the infinite multiplicity of all facets of manifestation, excuse me, of manifested creation, including you and me, and the dimension and objective reality we believe we inhabit, is merely a fractal chain reaction of God consciousness. Consciousness. The primary hermetic axiom, as above, so below. And the Kabbalistic adage, Kether is in Malkuth, as Malkuth is in Kether, only after another manner, are explicit declarations 
of this fundamental truth. The alphanumeric properties of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet are the building blocks of the fractal patterns of consciousness. This is why classic Kabbalah-based God names and the traditional names of archangels, angels, intelligences, and spirits are often found to be mathematically linked to each other by prime numbers or other numeric harmonics based on the number of a specific sephira or path. For example, and I've tried to write this down to make more sense on a, on a Sunday school show. For example, some of the angels traditionally associated with, and I'm going to give the example of this planetary sphere, Mercury, which is sephira number eight on the tree of life. Uh, some of the angels traditionally associated with this planetary sphere of Mercury, Sephira number eight, are the intelligence Tyriel. Okay, now when I spell it in Hebrew, it adds to these letters. Okay, there's Tyriel, 260. That's the sum of 1 through 8 times 8 divided by 8. So 8 is the big common denominator. And Tyriel is a perfect, the Hebrew letters that spell Tyriel, and it may not be exactly the way it's uh, pictured here. Okay. So that's that. Tyriel, you're shouting out a big 8 to the cosmos. Then the spirit, Tefartharath, Thuffer and Thukatath, it's Tefartharath, is 2,080, which is the sum of 1 through uh, 64, and 64 is, of course, 8 squared. And then there's the, the in, uh, intelligences, Din and Donnie. It sounds like a 70s rock group. Hey, it's Din and Donnie. Din and Donnie are cute little intelligences of Mercury. Din, 64, 8 squared. Donnie, spelled exactly the same way, but pronounced differently. 64 or 8 squared. So you see the number eight, and all cosmic and abstract meanings of all things eightish is the common denominator, and musicians will understand this, it's the common denominator and tonic note within these, which these spirits vibrate and harmonize at their specific level. But as you thumb through all the reference books in your library, you'll encounter hundreds of examples of these alphanumeric harm harmonies and find out that many of them do not neatly appear to be consistent in this manner. This is to be expected. Given the fact that most of our reference books are comp uh, compilations from multiple sources, written and rewritten, translated and retranslated from uh, uh, Hebrew to multiple languages, all with different pronunciations and renderings of Hebrew. Some even mixed with Greek and Latin and then into English. However, it's abundantly clear in the mythical Eden of the ideal and pristine Kabbalah, the divine letters began as the perfect alphanumeric building blocks forming divine words, which were the perfect alphanumeric building blocks forming divine sentences, 
which were the perfect alphanumeric building blocks forming the divine paragraphs, which were the perfect alphanumeric building blocks forming the divine chapters, which were the perfect alphanumeric building blocks of the book of life itself. The perfect alphanumeric building blocks to the mind of God itself. Tyriel and Taphthartharath and Din and Donnie may hold a special place in your tradition loving heart and indeed you might want to consciously work with them as mercurial forces in or in raising your own consciousness to the level of the Sephiroth Hode or the or the which is Mercur mercurial sphere or the path of Zion which is the path of mercury on the tree of life but Tyriel and Taphtartharith and Din and Donnie and all the traditional angels and spirits of the Kabbalah and medieval magic are not in and of themselves crystallized or sacrosanct magical beings living objective lives in some Kabbalistic boarding house. In keeping with the rabbi, hell no! Some real live person in the past made them up. Somebody just like you use their Kabbalah skills and imagination and invented all the gods, the archangels, angels, intelligences, spirits, and demons. As a matter of fact, using your mastery of the Hebrew alphabet, you could right now set to work to create your own personal and unique eight-based pantheon of spiritual forces, all your own. You could build their names from Hebrew letters enumerating to numbers that have eight as a conspicuous factor. Your knowledge of the proper colors reveal what these angels might look like. Your knowledge of the elemental, planetary, or zodiacal makeup reveal their specific powers and gifts. Think about it. Your own private hierarchy of spiritual beings, immediately and intimately linked to you, because they are your creations. That's the kind of thing grown-up Kabbalists do. That's what Kabbalah is all about. Now, my dear friend and comrade, here at the conclusion of your initiatory journey, I'm suggesting that you do just that. Create your own angels. Create your own personal hierarchy of heaven. Think of it as an exercise. Or think about it as your great work. Make it simple. God name, archangels who works for the God name, angel who works for the archangel, intelligence who works for the angel, and spirit that works for the intelligence. Now, that's not always the, the, the order of the hierarchy in, in traditional things, but that's a good one right there. God name, archangel, angel, intelligence, spirit. Start out with the tree of life as your ladder, reaching up through the levels of consciousness. Base your first set of names on the number 10. Starting at the bottom. Then nine, then eight, then seven, then six, five, four, three, two, and finally one. And that'll be a challenge. Don't think, you don't think you can do something like this? Hell yes, you can do it. You're a chicken cabalist. Don't worry about it. Just start. And that's this, 
Sunday School lesson for, for today and something for you to think about. Even if, you, uh, even if you don't do it, you can tell your grandchildren, I thought about it. <laughs> Until tomorrow, have a great rest of your weekend. Continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt, shall be the hold of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.